Blue. Black. So it's a hibernation. Right. Hibernation. Which is pretty good against Powder Cake. Right. I mean, I think Bob's, yeah, Bob's going to get a landed response because he feels he needs to counterspell this. this Hibernation is, Sliver prevents him from using his Powder Keg effectively at all. Yeah, this, this, uh, this Wasteland's really going to hurt. Lures really needs to top deck a, a land or two. Because uh, if, Bob, if Bob Wastelands the Tundra, that's going to leave him with a one, count, one counter at Gemstone Mine. Mm -hmm. The Wasteland would have hurt even more if Bob had done it on the first turn. Yeah. That's, that's a really hard play to know, though. That, that play so depends on just whether your opponent randomly has more land or not. Right. It's hard to know that. Off, given that Lures Mulligan down to six, it's not implausible that he would uh, only have two land. But this is probably not devastating bad. enough. Bob can take two for a long time. Yeah. Since Lures doesn't have much direct damage, Bob right. can just take two for a long time. Oh, and he, he risks Good. the powder keg. He knows that Lurs didn't play land on turn three. Right. He knows Lurs doesn't have land in his hand. Does he top deck land? Oh, no. That's Another disenchant. Take it, take it. That hurts. I think if Bob Bob untaps here, yeah, Lurs really needs a huge land. advantage. Bob. Yep. There's the first counter. There's a land. Now he's got up for bid. Or no, he plays treetop village. He doesn't doesn't leave up for bid. He leaves up brainstorm instead. Go ahead. But with one counter on gemstone line, what's he going to need to forbid? I guess that's the idea. All right, so there's a land. So he can disenchant the gemstone mine. Yeah, he gets one count. He gets one what, use of the gemstone or, mine, sorry, and then he's back he, down to one land again. Right. He doesn't disenchant the gemstone mine. He disenchants the powder cake. Well, he disenchants the gemstone mine too. That's true. Uh, that's probably what he's going to do. I'm not sure. Uh, if you're Bob Maher, I'm not sure if you if it's correct play to play the uh, treetop village. I guess he's thinking that even if he disenchants the treetop village should be able to block. Right. Which is fair enough. Although Lures does have the, the muscles lever, so if Lures can top deck another land after this, he has a decent shot at the game. It has to be a land that produces green mana. But that's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. I was a little surprised when Bob played the treetop village, but he didn't hesitate, so. I mean, at some level, I'm just willing to defer to Bob since he has so much expertise with this deck. Yeah, and it's... And it's and uh, he's probably thinking that disenchanting powder cake isn't the worst thing in the world. It'll take a counter off the gemstone mine and kill it. Right. And he still has the treetop village, which should hold off the uh, crystalline for a long amount of time right. and allow him to use his brainstorm tricks. In addition, he does have a two blue, so he's bluffing counterspell. Right. I mean, Glurs could easily just try to play around counterspell and say done, and actually open up Go. for bid. Which and that's did. what he does. Brainstorm. Well, now he's not. He can't bluff counterspell anymore. Sure. So. Be interesting to see if he disenchants it right away. He sh if he's going to disenchant, he should do it as a response, right. so Bob doesn't have a, have a f the option to force a will. So Bob doesn't isn't able to find a force a will. So it looks like Christian's rethinking his position. Right now that it's no longer a counter spell, there's no longer counter spell mana up. I think he's going to disenchant. I believe what? he is. In I think it's the right play. Yeah. Blue. <laughs> Brainstorm is response. Now let's see if there's a force of will. Counter spell, Morphling. Wow. Nope. Morphling's actually a pretty decent draw. That's not bad. He can put out two land and yep. put it on the table. All right. This looks heavily advantaged Bob Maher. Second brainstorm resolves. He'll second see brain he'll see one card deeper into his library. It's land, land, and land. That's fine. He's perfectly content to draw land right now. Yeah. He's got forbid, counterspell, and morphling in his hand. Yeah. He's his opponent's really hitting him for two, but he I mean his opponent can't even hit him for two because of the treetop village. Right. Lurs, Lurs needs, needs land draw. in a hurry and even then, Bob's in such good shape. This will be a hard game for Christian to come back and win. Yeah. And I think Bob would definitely uh, counter a winged, which is probably what no uh, Christian will cast. And Christian has, says, breathes a sigh of relief. No wasteland. He's quite happy to see that all those brainstorms did not find Maher another wasteland. Land. Oof. And another muscle flower. The next turn, Bob could potentially tap out for... Uh, he's not going to tap out for Morphling. That's right. He's not from California. All right. All right. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Tap out for Morphling. <laughs> do it for me. He, he can't plow it. What's he going to do? 
Do it. Do it. Go ahead. <laughs> Dang it. Another useless Go. counterspell. Well, good cards in Christian's hand, but... Yeah, but they all require two mana to cast. Land is really strong. Yeah, those Hopefully. expensive two mana cards. Alright, one blue untapped. Now it's time for Morphling. Okay. Go ahead. Now, Undiscovered now we can start casting things, but it's a little too late, I think. My Muscle Sliver does a little bit. It allows him to attack with Crystal. Green. No, not really. Bob can block with Mor block with Morphling and then pump Morphling's toughness. Now that he knows Plow's not coming out of Christian's hand, so Christian wisely decides not to bother attacking. Yep. Ooh. Boy, is that bad. Powder keg. Your slivers will like this card. I have two counters in my hand. Yeah, this game's over. Bob's going to play the powder keg. He'll have up Counterspell or forbid his choice of counterspell or forbid to counter any potential distant chance and uh, two turns from now all Christian slivers will go away. The only way that okay. uh, Christian comes yep. back is if he draws force of will. That's right. That's exactly what I was. He has thinking. to draw force of will. Force of will is the key card for Christian. Bob top decks powder keg. God, what what a draw! I love knocking on my deck when I know the top card. So many people just forget that you know the no top block. card. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Bob just has to figure out which land to use to, to play the powder keg. He leaves up the treetop village as a potential blocker. Okay. Although, I can't imagine that he would block with it. Of course he will. No. Nope. Land. A land, which costs a little bit, but should have been useful. Can he get four land into play to defend Disenchant with a counterspell before all his slivers die? No. No, the Undiscovered came back up to his hand, so he's got to drop three land and only two counters to the uh, to the keg. So yep. it doesn't work. Yeah, unless Bob somehow decides not to counterspell a Disenchant. Well, he can attack and see if Bob will activate Treetop Village. That's true. I mean, Bob That's left true. the Treetop Village untapped as a potential blocker. He could. But I, I, my theory is that Bob was bluffing. And he's not actually going to block. He's just hoping that the Treetop Village will look scary enough to prevent uh, Christian from attacking him. Right, and there's always the Morphling that could be brought back. Oh, yeah, Morphling untaps, doesn't it? That card's really what? good. I, li I like, I like what, what Christian does, though. He just says, okay, if you got a counter, let's see it. Which is what you have to yep, do. Like counterspell check comes up. That's the other thing is it could get scary for Bob to block. I don't sure. I don't think it's going to affect yep. his block, but uh, he would effectively be tapping out if he blocked the uh, creature assault. And I think he might as well attack since uh, the stuff's going to die to to powder keg anyway. Yeah, that Christian just did a counterspell check and Bob passed. Morphling card's really good. Go. So perhaps, probably what, uh, probably what Christian's thinking is to get out the wing sliver and fly everybody over. If he flies everybody over, he could potentially get a little bit more damage in before the powder cake blows everything up. But with forbidden, no hand, whatever. Mars at fourteen. Yeah, it's 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 really rough going at this point, especially with the keg. And Morphling flies. Yep, he's in sometimes. Yep. Bob pumps Morphling up to four two. Lurs takes four damage. It's now twelve. Lurs twelve. Mars fourteen. Another land. Bar still has forbidden his hand. Yeah, this is pretty unfortunate for Lures. It would have been a very interesting game if he had a little Disenchant, bit more land Force early. Plow. Not very good against Morphling. No. All those counter spells just don't help. Now at this point, I think he might as well uh, give it a good old alpha strike. He can uh, either alpha first 
hoping maybe to swords the treetop village for what that's worth or he can play the winged and try to fly every, some people over or alpha strike is the Cali answer to everything isn't it? yeah well you know just, just attack see what happens if you're going to lose you might as well bring him low <laughs> it's some kind of over under on the life totals <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, there's really not much he can do. I mean, he can he can like hope that uh, Maher makes a horrible misplay with Morphling or something maybe, or gets too aggressive with Morphling. But Lures is really on the three turn clock with Morphling doing four damage every turn. Yep. So Christian's probably thinking about what's the best. What's the best way to get some damage through here? Maybe hoping to top deck a uh, an acidic sliver or something like that. The problem is that if he if he if he uh, attacks with everything like dropping a wing sliver or something, Bob will not only kill something with the with the uh, morphling potentially, but mm -hmm. in addition he may not even blow the powder keg. He could just leave it at two counters, wait for Christian to draw something like an acidic sliver, and then he can use the keg in response. Or or I mean, I mean he would probably certainly counter an acidic sliver at this point, but. There's really just the situation is just really ugly for him. So how do you think the matchup between uh, Davis and Mars is going to go? Well, if that's if that's the final, and it certainly looks like uh, that's a prohibitive final given what we're looking at in this match here, uh, should be pretty interesting. Like um, the Necro player should potentially uh, tear up Bob's hand a little bit early, but Davis. Uh, and, and because Davis can kill him without ever laying a creature, the Oath of Druids isn't as good a uh, solution to right. Davis's damage threats. Um, on the other hand, Bob can draw... I, I'm pretty sure Bob can enlighten Tutor for some things that would uh, give him some advantage, even if he doesn't have very many cards in his hand. Yes. Not so easy. Yeah, finals will have... Creature damage will be almost Please irrelevant to the finals. Magic as it should be. Offering is good. It's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> Pretty much, that's why I'm rooting for Lures here, because he's the only one who's got some, like, small creatures. And he's playing Slivers, for God's sakes. How can you root against a guy who's playing Slivers? <laughs> You're not even from Boston. I think Lurz is just trying to get a little more German airtime for the German team. <laughs> I, I don't think he. This is the kind of airtime he wants. That's fair. So. I mean, Germany's making a run at. Uh, Germany has been near the top of the Pro Tour, Blue. probably the Blue. second best Blue. country as far as Pro Tour performance goes for the last year or so. They yeah. still have a ways to go to catch Canada for the all-time top eight marks for second anyway. I mean. The United yeah, States has the, had somebody in every top has never had less than two people in the top eight, has never has swept the top eight on two occasions. So we've got a comfortable lead in first, but uh, Germany's starting to breathe down Canada's neck. With the I believe there are seven different Germans who've made the top eight and let twelve Canadians. With the prominence in Germany lately, especially with Dirk Babarowski, Kai Buda, there's a lot of very solid players. I mean, even even uh, a lot of players that you wouldn't even have heard of their name a year ago, like a really solid player like Steven Walkheiser, who I believe sure. made top 16. Yeah, he was playing for top eight in the last round. Yeah, there's a lot of really great players from Germany, and uh, no reason to think that they're not going to be a dominant force as a country this season and seasons to come. Yeah, actual numbers for Germany. They have seven different players who've made the top eight for a total of, and a total of ten top eight appearances. That's uh, Kruger, Lurz, Babarowski, Janusz Kuhn, Andre Konstanzer, Henning Rimkis in Paris was the first German to make or second German to make a top eight. Frank Adler was the first. It's a pretty impressive list, yep. especially uh, Kruger, Lurz, Babarowski, obviously Kai Buda, awesome player. Yes, absolutely. Also, Germany has three wins. Germany does have three wins. Canada only yes. has two. Canada does have 12 different people who've made the top eight. A total of 16 yeah. top eight appearances. With some real monsters. Alvaro Marquez. Okay. Matt Vienu. I gotta say, I think tournament organizers around the world have to be celebrating the fact that Matt Vienu snuck into the top 32 in 32nd place. Does not need to play qualifiers for L.A. <laughs> 
Well, this is uh, the Alpha Strike, or quasi-Alpha Strike, that yeah. I anticipated. Slivers the, went up to the air with the wing sliver. Right. It's not really going to do much, just bring Maher down a couple points. Maher pretty much in total control. Yeah, I think Christian's spending a lot of time assuming that Bob does not have a counter spell. I mean, the reason that we all think this game is over is because we know Bob's got Forbidden in his hand. Right. That's, that's why we think the game's over. Christian's in a position where he's saying, all right, assume Bob has no permission and assume the top of my deck is exactly what I want it to be. And so he's looking for scenarios where he can win, and there probably are some. Right. But they're, they're, they're pretty remote, and they probably involve him top decking perfect, perfect, and Bob having nothing. But, I mean, we right. can see... Not Bob drawing Shard Phoenix and having Forbidden Hand. Right. I mean, the, the Dave Mills thing isn't going to come up. Six edition rules allow Bob to play a spell, then pay the cost. That's, that's not going to get Bob kicked out or anything. I mean, Bob's a really precise player. He's, I don't think he's going to make any mistakes here. No. No block. Yeah, see, Bob is really... One of the things that you got to like about what Bob's doing here is a lot of players when they get in this situation they're thinking of the powder keg as okay I can destroy his two slivers mm -hmm. Bob isn't thinking that way Bob's thinking how do I win this game mm -hmm. I don't need to blow this powder keg I'm not going to blow this powder keg until I absolutely need to mm -hmm. it's he knows how devastating it is against Lurus deck right. and so he's willing to just let it sit there until Lurus has an answer to it and Lurus doesn't have an answer to it Lurus does draw a land so he'll be able to finally have four land in place starting next turn. Just like Raphael Levy, we've seen a player have trouble building up his land. You just, you can't play without land. That's how many, right. How many land does Lurs have in his deck? Um, I'm not sure. I think we have a list around here somewhere, but remember, he did get Wastelanded and drew Gemstone Mine as Right, but I mean, lands. when you're building a deck for the extended environment, you have to assume you're going to run into Wastelands, what, at least half of the time, right? Right. Lurs probably running Lurs through plays, scenarios. plays with 23 way. land, which is, which is a perfectly reasonable number. I mean, it does include two Undiscovered Paradises and two Gemstone Mines, which are not the most reliable. Four Floodplains thins them out of land, but, I mean, 23 is reasonable for, especially for a deck that uh, has so many two-mana threats. Right. He could potentially cast uh, all the important spells in his deck at two mana. Like, I mean, if, as you've seen on this draw, he's drawn nothing but two-mana two spells. spells. But the key is that in order to really make his deck work, the control aspect of his deck really wants him to have four mana in play really needs to be able to go disenchant with counterspell backup. Right. And that he has to build up to four to do that, so it makes Wasteland very devastating. I mean, that is one of the flaws with the counter sliver archetype. It's extremely vulnerable to Wasteland. It's got better creatures than, say, a Merfolk deck, which is the other aggro control variant. But it gets much better creatures in exchange for a much weaker mana base. So this is the death creature. Bang. Six damage right, right. there. Puts you to five, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Congratulations to Bob Meyer Jr.